How's it going, friends, Outlaw Music? I want to welcome y'all to the next episode of what I like to call Outlaw Stories, where I like to pick one of our honky tonk heroes, tell a quick story about them. But before I do, if you like these stories, hit that like and follow so you'll be the first one to get notified when I have new stories and new content. Today's story is going to be about Leonard Skinner. So when we left off in part one, the seeds had been planted and the roots of Skinner had began to grow. Ronnie Van Zant, Gary Rossiton, Bob Burns, and Alan Collins enlisted another friend. When they added Larry Junstrom to bass guitar, they now had a five-piece band. They headed out and they started playing the bars and the honky-tonks. They called themselves Noble Five. Eventually, they changed their name to the Backyard. It was only after a run-in with an ex-high school teacher that would continuously put them in detention for having long hair that they would settle on the name Leonard Skinner. They named it after the teacher, and his name was Leonard Skinner. In the early days, Skinner did a lot of covers. They do things like the Yardbirds, the Beatles. A lot of British bands really inspired Leonard Skinner, and that's mostly what they would cover. Eventually, they would replace Larry Junstrom on bass guitar with Leon Wilkinson. Billy Powell worked for the band, and Ronnie Van Zant just so happened to hear him playing keyboard one day, and needless to say, Billy was on keyboard by the next gig. At one point, Ricky Medlock would take over for Bob Burns on drums briefly, but Bob Burns would make a return. After adding Ed King, a California guitarist from the Strawberry Alarm Clock, they now had a seven-piece band, Triple Lee Guitar Attack. They would release their first album, titled Leonard Skinner, in 1973, and it had some of our favorite hits, including Free Bird, Gimme Three Steps, and Simple Man. Their second album, titled Second Helping, was released in April 1974. It included their biggest hit, Sweet Home Alabama, which was the answer song to Neil Young's Southern Man. Skinner ended up in England for the first time. While there, Bob Burns took a little bit too much acid, and he went and watched The Exorcist. Between the pressures of the road and this movie, Bob Burns had a breakdown. There was a cat in the hotel room Bob Burns thought was possessed, and he threw the damn cat straight out the window. Bob Burns was already a badass, and he could fight pretty good. So all this acid gave him some superhuman strength, so it took everybody in the room to try to hold him down and get him calmed down. He was throwing everybody around like rag dolls. Bob Burns would quit Leonard Skinner. And for now, the remaining six were without a drummer. If you want to know what happens next in part three, or you want to hear more of these Skinner stories, just let me know in the comments. And like always, keep it outlaw.